Danica Patrick was a name that once electrified the world of motorsports. Countless drivers have come and gone, some all-time legends, while others glide through under the radar. But no other driver has fallen from superstar heights quite like Danica. She was once a pioneer, breaking barriers in a male-dominated industry and becoming a household name earlier in her career. From her quick rise as the first woman to win an IndyCar race, to becoming a marketing icon, Danica's journey was one of groundbreaking success. But by the end of it, she was seen by many as a driver who had no business being in the equipment she was given, and a hazard in anything she drove. This is the story of goals and dreams, of triumph and victory, and of setbacks and mistakes. This is the story of Danica Patrick's rise to racing stardom, and her fall from it. Danica Patrick was born on March 25, 1982, in Beloit, Wisconsin. She started her first venture into racing at the age of 10, after her parents encouraged her to try new things. And with her having an interest in either being a race car driver, or an engineer, she would take the driving route and start go-karting, immediately finding success by winning her class championship three times. At the age of 16, after finding major success in go-karts, Patrick dropped out of high school and moved out of the country to race Formula Fords and other things in the United Kingdom to further advance her racing career, with her biggest accomplishment being a second place finish in the 2002 Formula Ford Festival at 20. She'd moved back to the United States in the summer of that year, testing multiple types of cars, including dirt midgets, a NASCAR bush car for PPC racing, and an Indy Lights car, before being signed to her first USA racing contract by former IndyCar driver Bobby Rahal. Patrick made five starts for Rahal in 2002 in the Barber Dodge Pro Series before swapping to the Toyota Atlantic Championship for 2003, driving for the highly regarded Rahal Letterman team with the sponsorship help from Argent. Danica achieved moderate success in the Toyota Atlantic Series, becoming the first woman to win a pole while being a constant threat for the podium in the races. Although she didn't win a race in the series, she still finished third in the final standings. Following her impressive showing during her two seasons, Ray Hall Letterman Racing would sign Patrick to drive full-time in the IndyCar series for 2005 in the Honda No. 16. Danica's IndyCar career would get off to a tough debut, crashing out of the opening race at Homestead after driving into a multi-car pileup in Turn 1 and using virtually no brakes, sending her hard into the Turn 1 safer barrier. She'd finished 15th and 12th over the next two races, before earning a second place qualifying effort out of the country in Japan, later backing it up by leading 32 of the 200 laps in the race, and finishing just outside of the podium in 4th. The next race on the schedule was the biggest one in IndyCar, and probably all of motorsports. For over a century the race had stood above all others, being crowned the greatest spectacle in racing, and it would turn Danica Patrick into a star. In front of that rear wing is very Danica would come out of the gates hot in Indy by posting the fastest speed that month at 229.88 miles per hour and qualifying fourth for the biggest race of her life, possibly winning the pole had it not been for a bobble on one of her four qualifying laps. Danica Patrick became the first female driver to lead a race at Indianapolis on lap 56 during a cycle of green flag pit stops, but other than that she would be out of the picture for the first 150 laps, yet a restart crash on lap 155 would nearly end her race early. So you'll notice right over there on the right hand side, the very front of the car. Wow. Hey, I saw her car going to there. I saw her colors. There is the damage. Right. Gets Gal on the gas, starts just to try to avoid him, and probably just starts to clip him with her nose. There you can see another shot of it. She's on the high side. There you go. It wiggles because she's on the power. The cold tires turns around. The accident caused damage to the nose and front wing of her car with her pit crew quickly making repairs and sending her back out. However, when the leaders pitted for fuel on lap 172, it allowed Danica to cycle to the lead once more. She pitted much earlier. I don't think she can go 40 laps on her fuel, but they're telling her to move up on the pace car and draft. They're trying to conserve that much fuel. Well, the whole thing right now, if there's going to be, there's her mother back there. Here's the situation. You're in front, you're leading the Indianapolis 500. You don't know if you have enough fuel right now to make it to the end. Danica would lead the race for the next 13 laps, later losing it with 15 to go, but a yellow flag would give her another chance on the restart. Look at this! And the crowd is jumping up and down, Todd. Look at this, it's absolutely amazing. 
Danica Patrick has moved out into the front. It is Danica Patrick leading with Dan Weldon sitting in second. So the whole point with the green flag and if the pass was legit or not is moot. Danica Patrick is for real and she leads. But on lap 194, Dan Weldon passed her for the win after she was forced to slow down the car in order to conserve fuel. And she was quickly passed for both second and third, leaving Patrick with a fourth place result, the highest for a female driver in the Indy 500, besting the previous record at ninth. The next week, Danica would appear on the cover of Sports Illustrated for her Indy performance, which you can buy for the cheap price of $400 on Amazon, if you were wondering. Her top five at Indy would end up as her last top five of her rookie year, but her qualifying speed would not go anywhere, as she tied the IndyCar rookie record for poles in a season, having all three poles come at mile and a half. Danica ended 2005 with an 18th place finish at California after a crash late in the race, winding out her rookie season 12th in points with 7 top 10 finishes, being named Rookie of the Year and Most Popular Driver. In January 2006 she would continue to add to her impressive motorsports resume, by making her endurance racing debut at the 24 Hours of Daytona, co-driving a Howard Boss Motorsports Daytona prototype class, Pontiac Crawford, shared by Rusty Wallace, Alan McNish, and Jane Lamers. The team was competitive all race and in contention for the victory, but were forced to retire due to overheating problems. On the IndyCar side, Danica returned to Ray Hall Letterman Racing again for the 2006 season where things would start out tragic for the team during the opening race weekend, as her teammate Paul Dana was killed in a practice session accident on the day of the Homestead race, later withdrawing from the entire event before it began in honor of his memory. Her season would officially begin at St. Petersburg the next week, sparking off a streak of four straight top 10 finishes a starter season, including an 8th place run in the Indy 500. The final nine races again saw her capture four top 10s, with the highlights of her season being back-to-back -back fourths at Nashville and Milwaukee, being her only top fives in the year, improving to ninth in the final standings at season's end. During the middle of her year, it was announced that Danica would leave the team she originally signed with to join Andretti Green Racing and its number seven Honda. Though she toyed with the idea of joining NASCAR, stating, my heart and soul is in IndyCar right now. NASCAR is not out for good, it's out for right now. With her new team in 2007, she opened up the season with a crash at Homestead, trying to enter the pit lane. ...to win that's here, and I had this conversation with Dario Franchitti this morning, sitting in the hospitality area, he said, you know, I wonder sometimes maybe the wind is so strong here, does sand actually come onto this pit lane that we're going on right now? And here she is, just seems like the, man, you know, it just seems like she's off the gas and the back end locks up. Danica earned three top tens over the next four races, including a third straight top ten finish in the Indy 500. But the next week at Milwaukee, saw her confront Dan Weldon on pit road following the race after he cut her off into turn one while racing for fifth. After putting that in her mirror, the next race at Texas she would capture her first career podium with an impressive third place run. Matching that at Nashville later in the year and besting those two runs in the second to last race of the year on the streets of Detroit, finishing runner up. Danica closed out the year with her best season of her career so far, with career highs in podiums, top fives, and top 10s, along with the best points finish of 7th. To begin her 2008 season, Patrick scored a 6th place finish at Homestead, followed up with another top 10 the next week at St. Petersburg, before the highlight of her motorsports career the following week in Japan. is going in. Well, that last pit stop, they did add a little front wing. She likes the car much better. As with just about two and a half laps to go, the question is, she who's says, got it? And here she comes. Does she have enough fuel? She's going to take the high side. And Danica Patrick takes the lead at Montegi. Here she comes. The white flag, this time by, and nobody within sight. Look at Mom Bev. One and a half miles to go for Danica Patrick and the Motorola team. Could history be made at Twin Ring Motegi? Down the backstretch for one more time. Does she have enough fuel to get around the final two corners? Into turns three and four. Danica Patrick coming out of four. And boys, move over. 
the lady is coming through. Danica Patrick wins a twin ring Motegi. Danica's next two races after her first win saw her finish 19th with a hub failure at Kansas, while also failing to finish her first Indy 500 of her career after a crash exiting the pit lane. Five of the next six races saw Danica finish in the top 10, including a fifth place run at Nashville. But at Mid-Ohio the following week, her and another female driver in Melka Duno would have a run-in during practice. Danica had two more top 10s to end the year, eventually rounding out the season at career best 6 in the final standings. Again in January of 2009, Danica would appear in the Rolex 24, just three years after her initial debut with her team this time including RCR driver Casey Mears, Andy Wallace, and Rob Finley in the number 2 Daytona prototype class Pontiac Crawford, fielded by Childress Howard Motorsports, finishing 8th in their overall class. An IndyCar Danica wrecked out early in Detroit to kick off the season, but rebounded with 8 top 10 finishes over the next 9 races, including a podium in that year's Indy 500. She'd earned 3 more top 10s after her impressive streak to open the season, eventually ending the season with her first and only top 5 points finish in 5th, being the highest non-Penske or Chip Ganassi car in the standings. Over the offseason in December, Danica would shock the motorsports world, announcing an ARCA test in the Junior Motorsports 7 at Daytona for the upcoming 2010 race, as well as a part-time ride in the car in the Nationwide Series, beginning at NASCAR's most historic track in Daytona teaming up America's most popular drivers and Dale Jr. and Danica Patrick. Yeah, but you know what I like already, and it's, it's great for Danica, is they're already single file. And now this will give her a chance to kind of relax a little bit, get comfortable with the car, and be able to give Tony Jr. some feedback here very shortly. So uh, I like the way things are going for her right now. Her stock car career would get off to a solid start in Daytona, making an impressive save through the trial of grass and eventually finishing 6th. The next Saturday for her nationwide debut would not fare too well for her, and it started a common trend for her NASCAR career. And she had nowhere to go. Yeah, she just, I mean, gets by that car right there, but there's just nothing. There's, I know it looks like room, but you're traveling at a high rate of speed, and she almost made it. Been in front of you, back it down. He's up here against the wall, up here against the wall. He's against the wall, against the wall, against the wall. Her next race at Auto Club saw her finish 31st three laps down, before being caught up in another crash the following week at Las Vegas with Michael McDowell in turn 1. The rest of her season wouldn't fare too well, as she still adjusted to stock cars, finishing outside the top 20 in her first 12 races before a 19th place run to end her season at Homestead. Her IndyCar Danica returned with a new green look, opening up the season with the 15th place run, followed up by a 7th in Detroit and 3 straight finishes outside of the top 10. Patrick continued the slump into Indy, qualifying at Career Wars 23rd for the race, but turning it around for his 6th place finish, being backed by a strong runner up at Texas the following week. At Sonoma she set a new series record for the most consecutive races running at the finish, going 29 straight races without a DNF, ending her season by matching her Texas finish in the final race of the year at Homestead, propelling her to a top 10 points finish of 10th. Three finishes of 10th or worse in her first four races of her IndyCar year put her behind to start the 2011 season, rebounding with another top 10 in the Indy 500, only having one career finish outside of it. The rest of Danica's season would be solid, garnering six top 10s to round out the year before announcing that she'd be departing from the series at the conclusion of the year. About Danica, today in Phoenix, Arizona, she made it official. She is coming to NASCAR. Yes, for breaking news that will shock the world, um, I am excited to finally announce, we're excited to finally announce that GoDaddy will be taking me full-time into NASCAR next year. Uh, it'll be a full-time nationwide program with Junior Motorsports and the number seven Chevrolet, and a partial schedule in Sprint Cup with Stuart Haas Racing. Her last full-time IndyCar race would be marred with tragedy, 
Following the passing of legend Dan Weldon in a turn one pileup, ending her full-time career driving in a salute to him. On the NASCAR side, she'd go from 13 races in 2010 down to 12 in 2011, again driving for Junior Motorsports. Immediately, Danica would be more competitive and well-adjusted compared to the year prior, besting her best finish of 2010 in each of her first two races with a 14th and a 17th. But those finishes pale in comparison to her impressive run in the third race at Las Vegas, taking a top 10 car to a fourth place run using fuel strategy, marking the highest finish for a female driver in NASCAR history. Her crew, everybody that stood behind you, girl, what a difference a year makes. What was the difference today for you? Uh, just, you know, we worked so hard on the car this weekend. Um, the next week, Danica suffered a hard crash after contact with Ryan Truex on the front stretch at Bristol, but came back strong for her next two races at Chicago and Daytona, with two straight 10th place finishes, ending the season with massive improvements compared to 2010, dropping her average finish from 28th all the way down to 17th. Now full-time in the Nationwide Series in 2012, Danica started off her season with her first career NASCAR pole at Daytona. Her race wouldn't be so good, however crashing early on lap 50 after a push gone wrong. Danica sideways. Oh no! Into the wall! Caution's out. Through the first half of 2012, Danica sat ninth in the standings, with just one top 10 finish, nearly earning a second career top 5 at Road America. Oh, oh he takes her out! Oh, come on. Unbelievable. Into the ground trap. Unbelievable. But at the second race of the season at Montreal, things changed for Danica. And for the first time in her NASCAR career, she was the driver to beat. Well, Marty, Danica Patrick took the lead around lap 25. And right now, she is telling Tony Erie Jr., her crew chief, that the car feels very good. They're telling her just to focus on her race, run her line. She did come down pit road on lap 19 for four tires. So it looks like right now the plan is to make it a two-stop race. Rick? Inside the she's, zone, she's crabbing a little too. She's yeah. a little offline. Gets a great restart. Really good in second. And strong in third. That's three good restarts in a row for. Her. That is someone's shoe. And then here comes Danica. And bam, mm. drop kicks it. Her dominant car would wind up in a heartbreaking 27th place after leading 20 laps and unfortunately she'd never come that close to winning a NASCAR race again. She rounded out her season with four top 10s and a solid 10th place points finish, setting the table for what should be a solid season in 2013. They put her in cup. But first she had a 10 race part-time deal with Tommy Baldwin Racing in 2012 to get her feet wet in the cars, starting out with a violent crash in her duel for the 500. Here we go. And she's all right after a hard crash, and the caution flag is out. In the Daytona 500, things wouldn't get any better for her, waiting nearly 36 hours to race, just to eventually wreck out on lap two. Three fours, oh, trouble hard turtle already. Turtle the wall. Slams to the outside, it's five-time champion Jimmy oh, Johnson. No. He collects Danica Patrick and the 34 of David Reagan. Her 2012 debut cup season was pretty similar compared to her debut nationwide season in 2010, only having one top 20 finish and it coming in her final race of the year. But on the cup side, she had a lot more shenanigans. Well, rule number one of stock car racing is learn how to wreck someone without wrecking yourself. And she gets in on the bumper, and but just doesn't get off of him. Right, right there. where you're talking, and yeah. you just turn it left and lock it down. Naturally, she was given a full-time ride with a championship-winning organization for 2013 in Stuart Haas Racing, driving the number 10 GoDaddy Chevy. And although the season would end up as a disaster for her, it did start off nice, becoming the first female driver to win a pole in the Cup Series, coming in the sport's biggest race. The popular driver award with Dale Earnhardt Jr. pretty much has been a lot for the last few years. Patrick started on the pole for the nationwide race here last year and she knocked the boss off the pole. Yes, 45.817, 196.4 miles an hour for Danica. That is a, that's a great lap, guys. 
During the race you would hold her own, leading 5 laps in the event, and earning your first career cup top 10 in 8th. This was her only top 10 that year. That's probably what top 10 is. Let's see what happens here with her. Do I hear it? Bam. The one lap down, transfer position. There's two of them right there with Ricky Stenhouse inside them. Yeah, I think it, uh, it got a little tight. Ricky made, maybe it moved up a little bit and caused Danica to move up a little bit. Got into the two car of Keselowski and into the wall they go. Danica Patrick around. Coleman Arc gets a piece of it. Oh, and others begin to slip and slide. That dumb <laughs> that went to kill her. Ran out of talent again. Un real. And uh, just made a kind of an erratic move and the car just jumped away. Jump out from under. Well, very similar to what happened to Kyle Busch on the first lap of practice yesterday morning, although he was able to just maybe hit the side more than in the front. But the car just got loose as she tried to turn down in the corner. Still lined up outside. Three wide middle. Still three middle. Danica finished the season 27th in points, just 52 ahead of her boss and teammate Tony Stewart who missed the final 15 races due to injury. The next year would begin her legacy as a polar bear in Arlington, Texas, being on a team with three NASCAR champions and Hall of Fame drivers for the 2014 season. Brian Scott down right next to and Kevin oh. Harvick makes contact in the yep. four. That's what shot Scott. Yep, that's what shot the 33 up the hill. I knew something had to happen because he just abruptly, the 33 abruptly turned to the right and went up the hill. We got our pole sitter involved. Danica, Austin Dillon, Danica Patrick, Michael Waltrip. Among those involved. With Danica bottom Patrick. The longest line. Just that nine outside you, that's all you got out there. Okay, to the bottom. Check up, check up, check up. Good job, good job. Back it down, back it down, nice and smooth. Uh, back, back, back. Uh, yeah, it's already started there. I th think it's, I think it may have been the 51 and the 10 uh, that I saw started that. The greatness around her didn't help her much at all, and through the first 10 races she was left 29th in the standings. But at Kansas for the 11th race, she posted a solid run, showing true speed all night and ending the race in 7th place, being a career best. She got right back to the old grind over the next 14 races though, posting just one top 10 finish, coming at a rain shortened Daytona race where literally everyone wrecked. That is the huge one at Daytona. Another new career best would be set at one of the toughest tracks in NASCAR when she finished 6th at Atlanta. But outside of leading late at Talladega, that would be it for the season on highlights, ending up worse in the standings in the year prior, this time finishing 64 points behind Tony Stewart, who missed 3 races. For 2015 Danica was back in the 10 car and actually started off the season nicely sitting inside the playoffs with two top 10s after the 8th race of the year at Bristol, but those are the last top 10s of her season. Diving to the bottom and oh. Danica Patrick goes for a ride into the turn one wall. Yeah, we saw smoke coming from her car. It's almost like she maybe cut a tire down. Turn 3 and 4, goes to accelerate, car just gets away from her, she has to chase it up the racetrack and ends up with heavy contact. Danica on the outside of Newman. Around she goes. Didn't look like there was contact there, but could have been earlier. Yeah, I have to believe there was contact the way she turned around quickly. Here comes David Ray. Nowhere to go. He did nothing wrong. As she comes down, and the 38 stops right in front of her. Yeah, Danica. And now they're not going to stop. It's not over. Danica's upset at Gilliland from early in the race. Remember, the two got together, and Danica tried to pay her back and I'll pay him back or rather. Or and probably go to the garage, I'd say. She got the worst of it. Danica had a new sponsor for the first time since 2010 following GoDaddy's departure, and there's not really much to say for her season. She continued to run behind her teammates, she got zero top 10s, but she did post a career best average finish of 22nd. So on the bottom here. Underneath Casey Kane, looks like Casey Whoa. went to go Casey just, tuck yeah. in behind her and just misjudged it, got into her right rear, turned her into the wall, hard impact. Man, right down the straightaway here. Woo. Oh boy, Stanley Steamer. Whoa, there's oh, and a no. route. Uh, he's fine, boy. He got the window net down right away out of frustration. The four car, Harvick. Danica climbs out, radio cord gets disconnected. Side she's down. She's right in the middle, the fourth, fifth car back. I think somebody makes contact with. Oh, the McDowell oh, got McDowell. her in the left rear. Yep. Yep. And then oh, no, he hit. She hit him in the right front. 
And when, oh, and when that happened, it just got air underneath the car. Is anybody left in this race? 2017 would be her fifth full-time season in Cup, and by this point people were already over the Danica NASCAR experiment, and this season would be her worst. DNFing a whopping 11 times in 36 races, and at one point sat 33rd in the standings. But just before the final race of the year at Homestead, she announced her retirement. Uh, so this will be my last uh, season as a full-time driver. My sister told me I was supposed to get emotional. <laughs> I said I wouldn't. Sadly, though, her full-time NASCAR career would end in flames. You're all clear to hop out. Good job by the spotter there to let her know she was clear, no cars coming behind her. You mentioned A.J. Allmendinger was just behind the 10. He was making a pass on the inside as Danica got hard up into the wall in case he came nowhere to go. In a surprise to many, however, she wasn't done completely. As in January 2018, it was announced that she would reunite with longtime partner GoDaddy to sponsor her for a Daytona 500 attempt for Premium Motorsports and an Indy 500 attempt in a third car for Ed Carpenter Racing, allowing her to end her career in a full circle. She made the Daytona 500 for Premium, yet on lap 102 of the race, her NASCAR career would come to an end. Big push coming from Elliott and Keslowski. Contact! Oh! Elliot no. slam into the wall. Are you kidding me? Danica Patrick, Casey Kane. Oh man, oh man. For her final Indianapolis 500, she qualified in for the event, but suffered the same fate as she did in Daytona, this time coming on lap 68. Very similar to Ed, Ed Jones. Jones. In the middle of the turn, the back end starts to come around. Though her results in NASCAR never matched her early success in IndyCar, Danica's impact on racing was undeniable, inspiring young women across the world to believe they could race with the best. Danica changed the game, and she showed that women could not only compete, but they could make history in a sport that had always been dominated by men. Her story wasn't one of a single, uninterrupted rise to glory, it was a journey filled with triumphs and setbacks, of incredible highs and difficult lows. But through it all, Danica remains a pioneer for female athletes, a fierce competitor, and a symbol of what's possible when you refuse to never give up.